Hello and welcome to the Innovation Center in Winona, Minnesota. My name is Ben Johnson. I'm the sales director for our solutions team and I'm going to walk you through a virtual tour, um, walking through our various vending and fast spin devices. Before I get started, I wanna talk real high level about our program. So Fastenal is the world's largest provider of vending machines. We have over 100,000 devices uh, throughout mainly North America, but also through Europe and Southeast Asia. How we go to market is that Fastenal owns our, the vending machines and we lease it to our customers through a spend commitment. So what's great for the customer is that Fastenal owns the capital equipment expense, we own the ordering process, the restocking process, um, if there's any maintenance, if there's any optimization, Fastenal handles that whole process. Um, we just ask from our customer that they stock, our, or that they allow us to stock products with Fastenal products. So how we accomplish all of this is what we call our team behind the machine. Um, so we have over 15,000 store-based people who for the most part handle all of the, the servicing and, and any minor maintenance uh, requests. Otherwise we have a vending team with three to 400 people um, with local specialists that handle more technical issues. Um, we have 12 service centers across North America that uh, all of our installation work comes from. Um, we also have uh, various other groups such as uh, a Lean Six Sigma team, um, other specialists that are all part of this team behind the machine uh, to ensure that uh, machines are deployed and running properly. What we found over many years of experience is that machines, vending programs don't run by themselves. Um, it, does re it does take um, people behind the scenes to make everything happen. So next, we will move over to our vending machines. All right, this is our very first device. This is called our Fast 5000 device. Um, this is our most popular device. Out of our 100,000 machines deployed in the field, almost half of the devices are the Fast 5000. Um, why it's so popular is that this device is, it's very simple, it's very reliable, and it's cloud-based. And, and the reason I say cloud-based and why that's important is all about security. So lots of vending machines in the market, you'll notice, have a full-blown operating system. Typically, it's a Windows CE-based operating system, which is actually pretty cool at the machine. You can um, do a lot of navigation. You can um, look up order templates and, and find parts. Um, but what they're really bad at is that any type of uh, full-blown operating system can catch a virus. Now, we've seen this um, happen countless times um, to our customers through other vending machines. So we decided to equip this with a very simple logic board. It has a little 8-bit processor on there. And all that logic board needs to do is it needs to identify who I am as a user when I gain access, um, send an encrypted message up to the cloud, which um, determines based on my users and permissions what um, coils and motor positions I have access to. Um, and then it shoots it back and, and lets the machine know that I can which coils I can access. So it's a very uh, simple, safe, and secure transaction. And we prefer all of our rich features to be up in the cloud um, that's accessible, um, it's real-time information, it's accessible 24-7 to our customer. And uh, we prefer the, the simplicity at the machine. So as far as access into the machine, uh, typically how we load this machine um, with users is that uh, we uh, work with the customer to create a, um, it's called an employee template. We'll get a list of all of the users who are going to have access to the, to the machines. And we'll typically tie a, either a department code or a cost center um, to the employee name. So when you look at reporting down the road, um, that information is already loaded in there. Getting into the machine, um, we've got four ways to, to access it. The first is just a simple keypad entry. Um, most of our customers use some type of badge though, so they can be equipped with readers. Um, the first is a, a barcode reader that this one is equipped with, so it can have a, a card with a barcode on there. Um, probably most popular is an RFID proximity card, which has a reader that I would simply wave my card in front of the device to, to gain access. Um, those are almost, in every case, that's the same card that the user would um, gain access into the front door of, of their building, so they only have to carry one card. And then lastly, um, there's a MagStrike reader as well. Um, that's less common. So one thing I can, I can do once I've, I've gained access is I can ask a series of questions to, to 
um, collect more data at the transaction. So if I want to collect a GL code or a job number, I can the, the system can ask me for that information. Or um, in many cases, we don't we want to speed up the transaction so we don't ask any questions at all. So now that I've identified who I am and I've typed in any extra information, I now Based on uh, my role and uh, what department I may be in, I, I may have access to some products, but not others. So for example, if I'm an electrician, I have access to these wire cutters, maybe this tape measure, maybe this electrical tape, uh, but I don't have access to batteries per se. Uh, so it just you, gives you lots of flexible control to give access to some parts, to some people, and not to others. And we can also do limitations. So um, a good example would be the batteries that uh, you may want to uh, set a limitation that I can only bend one package of batteries per week or per month or even per day if you wanted to, to really drill into it. So um, lots of flexible features for bending products. And as far as um, how these products bend, there's a couple things I want to mention that, um, that, that you may be thinking of uh, with a coil-based machine is that you may be familiar with a stack machine and something a product gets hung up on a coil. A couple things we do to prevent that from happening. The first is that we've got extensive product testing within our department. So all of these products are thoroughly tested um, based on its dimensions and its bendability. So we will um, we will set up a coil. Um, we, so there's different variables such as the, the home position of that coil, the coil type, um, the distance between the segments, the height, we may put in a spacer or a riser, lots of different variables to make sure that bend, that product bends perfectly. Um, if uh, by chance it does not bend and something does get hung up, we, we have all these devices equipped with an infrared drop sensor at the bottom, so if it doesn't come out, um, that coil will continue to turn until it hits that infrared beam. Moving along to our lockers, so um, lockers can be tied to a, a coil machine. So I only have one keypad that's going to access um, all lockers. We've got locker varieties from two doors all the way up to 36 doors. And lockers do uh, mainly three different things. So first thing they do is they, they can house large consumables. So obviously if I've got bulkier parts that don't fit in a coil, I can put it into a locker. Second thing is we can set up a what we call locker pickup. So this is a scenario where um, either you buy on fastenall.com and in the checkout process, you um, designate that you want that picked up in a locker. You can, you can do that at that point. Or if you call in a fastenall store, um, you can ask for that to be designated to a locker. Um, the fastenall employee gets the order, fulfills it, brings it up to your facility, um, puts it into a locker. As soon as that locker door is shut, it's going to send an alert to whoever bought that and they will then get a pickup code. They will walk up to the machine and either enter in the pickup code or they can scan the, the barcode from their phone and it will open that door. So in this day and age of social distancing, we find that's a really big benefit um, to have less um, people on your floor that don't need to be there um, and less contact time. Final thing that these lockers do really well is that they asset man they manage assets. So, um, and let's say if you want to walk over here and look at some of the different types of products we put in our lockers. So these are all types of assets that we manage. Anything from um, cordless tools to precision measuring devices, um, lots of different types of things that uh, a customer may have a problem with it growing legs and walking away. So how it works is um, as I <clears throat> access the, the machine, I can choose to check out a product. So I check it out. That product is now in my possession, and I now, based on rules that you may want to set up, have a time limit to have that device. Um, maybe it's uh, maybe it's a, a set of calipers that um, can only be used for 60 hours before they need to be recalibrated. So that that type of rule can be set. Alert goes to to maintenance to get that done. Or maybe I want to make sure that that just gets returned at the end of my shift, which just happens to be at three o'clock. And uh, if it's not returned by three o'clock, an alert goes to a supervisor. So again, we're creating alert systems um, to, to help manage these assets and to make sure that they get returned. All right, um, and then just a few other things in this locker. Uh, we, we also, these work in conjunction with our support, ser our industrial services. Um, so we do, uh, we, we build slings and uh, welded bandsaw blades 
um, hoist and, and chain and, and cable inspection. So we also can house those type of products and, and use our alert system to, to know when to uh, repair those items. Moving along, we have a FAST 3000 device, so that's same features and functionality as a FAST 5000, just a smaller footprint, and then different locker sizes that you see here. If a locker um, can't be placed next to a coil machine, we can bolt on a standalone controller and put a locker anywhere in your facility. All right, so let's go to our our weight and pusher based system. So these are this is our fast 10,000 series. First item um, I'll show you is a it's a seven drawer unit, and um, it's, again it's a very simple type of access in, into the device. There's um, all this keypad does is in this case I'm going to enter in my user ID. I could scan a badge if I like if I had that equipped. And it's going to give me a selection of different of all the different drawers I can open. So I'm going to pick the top drawer, and it's a drill bits as it's marked on the outside. And as I open that, you can see all of the different um, parts I have in here. So um, the the convenient part of this device is um, we call this a, a grab and go um, type of device, meaning that I can um, since there's a scale under each one of these compartments, I can grab whatever products that I like. Um, I can even put them back if I grab the, the, the wrong one and it'll, it'll count that back into the inventory. And as soon as I shut that drawer, it's going to recalibrate every scale and uh, based on what's been, what's been taken, it's gonna send that message up into the cloud and, and record a transaction of who I was and what quantity I took. These devices are typically used, um, can, consider this more of a maintenance department device um, as, um, we're not trying to, to limit, restrict, or control who gets access to what. Um, as you can see, as I open a drawer, once I get a drawer open, somebody could, could technically grab whatever they wanted. I can't tell them they can't have that. Whereas a coil machine, I can lock down individual coils and have more um, controls and restrictions. So again, this being for a maintenance department, you, all you want, may want to do is just get um, recorded transactions of, of what inventories being taken so you can have access to that data and use it um, to uh, make your supply chain better. These are 12, or, I'm sorry, 20 pound scales at the very bottom. Um, the top, uh, the very minimum weight is uh, six grams and we can take even smaller parts and put them in packaging if needed to pretty much bend as small of a part as you want. But a nice feature of these is that we don't have packaging um, restrictions or requirements. Um, you can put a very wide variety of products in these, unlike the coil machines where they have to be very specifically tested. I'll show you our product locator, which is our search tool. So this is for a customer that may have um, maybe a dozen of, of these and I have a hard time finding what I'm looking for. So this is a simple search tool that I can search either by location or by product. If I search by product, it's gonna open up a category tree so my higher level categories say it's indexable cutting tools. Um, then I want to drill into drill inserts. And then now I have a, a series of attributes if I wanted to filter down um, even deeper into my search, or I could just select the part that I'm looking for and it's going to tell me um, exactly what, what uh, machine, tool crib 15, it's in drawer 7, position 708. So it's a pretty, pretty slick search tool. But again, just um, when we have lots of machines. If I just have one, it's, it's pretty easy to find what I'm looking for. Then the last two devices in the 10,000 series are the, uh, this is our door only device. So all the, the shelves you see behind the glass are all configurable so I can very easily plug and play and create whatever combination of shelves that I want. Um, so there are some scale modules in here, uh, but most of these are pusher modules and how those work. Um, a good example would be disposable nit nitrile gloves. Um, it sits um, on a track and behind the box there's a paddle, um, spring-loaded paddle, and it runs along a track. Um, it has electronics in it to measure the depth of that box. So when I take one box out, it knows, it, it ties a quantity to that exactly the way a scale would work. Um, again, no, no real way to, to restrict or, or limit or lock down if I give you access to the whole door. So this is another common maintenance type device. 
And then the last device in this series is uh, the combo unit, which is really just, as, as it sounds, it's a combination of the two. And uh, I'll open a, a bottom drawer so you can see the largest compartments we have, which are 40 pound scales. So you can get some pretty heavy, bulky items into that device. All right, let's, uh, moving along, we have our SL Locker Series. So these are the exact same frame as the other lockers that I showed you. Um, but what's different is that these have a scale in them. What they cannot do is they cannot uh, do locker pickup, they cannot manage assets, but what they can do, and they do really well, is manage bulk consumables. Uh, what, what the lockers without the scale, the, the, what they can't do is, is um, create a, an automated quantity, so you have to enter a quantity, quantity taken question at the locker. It's not always 100% accurate. Sometimes somebody puts in the wrong quantity, so for more valuable items, um, we equip these with scales. And they come in 18 door, um, 24 door, and 27 door varieties. Moving along, we have some larger compartment lockers for items like large absorbents, uh, five gallon pails, fencing, as you can see, some stakes and cones, anything that, that's larger, um, these do an excellent job at. And then finally, uh, we have our outdoor locker. Um, so this is uh, really mainly designed for our, our locker pickup application. Um, and as, it, as it, in the name, it's an outdoor variety of locker, so it can be an extreme cold and extreme heat. And uh, typically, we'll have these in front of our stores, but for some customer locations where they need 24-7 access outside of their building, we'll, we'll put them at customers as well. So that's our vending lineup, and next we will move to our fast bin technology. Starting with our, our very basic bin stocks, this is something we've been doing for, for really well for many decades. Um, it's just a, it's a regular bin stock. We um, offer pigeonholes, variety style bins, um, plastic bins on racks, um, really any type of bin system. What um, is really unique about our program though is really behind the scenes. All of these products um, have a home on our Fast360 application. So if you were to um, log in Fast360 on our website, you would see this planogram of all of your parts and you would see um, what the min max levels are. So the, the reason that might be valuable is you may be looking for that part online and, and lo and behold, when you find the part online, it's gonna tell you the, the exact location where you may already have that in stock and what, what your stocking levels are. Um, how fast and all service the, services these, we use iPad technology. Um, so it's a, it's a very efficient um, process for us. We've got a planogram on our iPad and when we restock them, um, we simply just select the position and uh, it's a very quick restock versus having to scan every bit. Moving along to more automated systems, we have um, some recent developments in RFID technology and infrared technology. So RFID technology is simply a two-bin or multi-bin Kanban system. So how it works, um, and this is set up as a two-bin system, so when a product goes empty, I would bring a um, the backup stock, so this is the same part, I bring that forward. And in old systems, um, there's typically a card system where I would put that card on a, on a holder and it would let everybody know that it needs to be replenished. Instead of that card system, we use RFID, which is this label on the back. And when I set, set this bin up in the replenishment zone, what it does is it triggers a restock at our local store. Um, along with that uh, local store restock, it's also going to um, trigger that uh, Fast360 planogram. So as a customer, you're going to see a basically a fuel gauge next to the part. It's either going to be full, it's going to be uh, below min, or it's going to be at a critical level. So um, providing visibility to our customers and automated restocks at the branch. Um, infrared system is similar, but instead of being at a fixed um, locations such as a, a tool crib or a central place in your warehouse. Um, this is more of a point of use solution. So you can see what we've done. This is a, a patent, patented fastenal technology. We've taken a regular plastic bin and we've inserted a printed circuit board. Within that circuit board, um, there are infrared beams, just um, like our vending machines use. And what that does 
is this uh, series of beams going back and forth in here uh, can detect the level of that bin based on how many of those beams are blocked. So our replenishment model is based on, is it 100% is it full, is it three quarter full, is it half full, or is it quarter full? Um, and we're gonna set that min max based on the customer requirements of when they want that filled to help control your inventory. Um, these are powered. There's a, a small watch battery in here that lasts about seven years. And as far as connection, there is a Bluetooth or a BLE connection that transmits from this bin to this controller. This controller plugs into the internet um, that creates a basically a wireless circuit within your facility. Um, if the, the range is too great between this bin and this controller, we also have these repeaters um, that extend the network. So we can set these up anywhere in the warehouse and provide uh, full network coverage. So benefits of these, of really both of these systems are it's A, it's visibility. So um, not only for, for you, the customer, but for, for us servicing it. Um, B, it's productivity. So for, on the customer side, it's more productive for you because you're going to stock out less. No matter who is replenishing your bins, nobody can guarantee 24 seven, you know, on the hour, on the minute, um, checking of that bin um, where these systems can. Um, it's also going to provide a, a level of social distancing because it's less time that um, your supplier is spending on the floor interacting with your people in front of your bins. And obviously it's more productive for our employees. Um, so they're less time checking bins, more time servicing your account. And then last is really the inventory. Um, we're going to create a lower inventory state um, through some, some analytics. Um, knowing what the optimal levels of inventory are, we can really dial in that stocking level. And then lastly, we have our fast scale system. Um, so this is a little bit of an older system, but it um, does exactly what we want it to. There, it's a scale-based system. So if it's a if it's a production fastener, or a production part environment where I need to know the exact count on my shelf, these scales provide that. Um, these do come on a, on a fixed shelf version, um, where I either have uh, the options are six 25-pound scales or at the very bottom I have four 50-pound scales. Uh, future developments, we are working on modularizing these scales and put, putting them on the same platform as our infrared and RFID. Uh, this is a great solution for, for production parts. So thank you for joining me today and uh, we'll catch you next time.